Welcome to my watercolor demo of a painting I did of my brother. This is the photograph that I used. I took this photograph a few years ago when we were on a sailing trip from Sardinia, Italy to Corsica, France. What I liked about the image was the sense of freedom of being out in the open waters. What doesn't work for that freedom and that sense is the big sail at the top of the picture. So before I drew it, I did a few thumbnails and decided I was going to crop that out. I painted the sky in a similar way that I did the sky in my previous demo, Il Nonno. Basically that was painting wet into wet for that area and I used phthalo blue and tone that down with just a little bit of Prussian blue. Now I'm starting to work very lightly on the sailboat itself. Very watered down blue. The sailboat is mostly white so these are really just shadows that I'm painting in. And a great idea for shadows is to get away from grays and blacks and use more of the colors that are reflected in other places in your painting. I'm just playing with some of the shapes that I see in the sailboat. Again, these are really just shadow shapes and I'm painting them with the same colors that are in the sky. As I'm starting to think about painting his face, I'm considering his complexion. He's pretty tan in this picture, so I mixed up a uh, nice puddle of alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. I am painting on dry paper, but my paint is fairly wet. I would say it's a uh, milk consistency, maybe even a skim milk consistency, and I'm Picking the areas where I see the most color and putting those in first. And I'm going in pretty boldly. I know that this paint is going to fade as it dries and I'd rather not do a lot of passes on the skin. I'm trying to retain some freshness to it. In the shadowy areas, I am adding just a touch of French ultramarine blue. All the skin tones that I paint are a combination of mostly red with a little bit of yellow and shadows are done in blue. That's for Caucasian skin tones. In the areas where my brother has the most sun hitting his face, I'm really just adding water and letting the darker areas that I just painted softly travel into the watery areas. Even though it's nerve wracking because you really can't tell how it's going to look and it can start looking pretty choppy, I tend not to keep going back in with my brush. I will put down those colors, dab them in, and then not keep stroking it over and over again. I'm building up where I see more pigment. And the paint on the paper at this point is drying, so it gives me more control. I'm also aware that while this can start to look really red or really pigmented, it's because it's against a white background. And that once we start to get all the other colors in, this color of the skin does not look as colorful or as bold as it does now.
I'm working on the ear in that uh, lighter section and I'm keeping it as its own section. I don't want that shape just blending into the rest of the face. As I let the face dry, I'm going to start painting his arm. I am using the same colors, but maybe a little bit thicker. Notice that at this point, my biggest concern is getting the shadow and light in and keeping the edges soft. I am not painting around uh, details of the thumbnail or creases in the hand. Those sorts of details are always last, but I have to get the bigger shapes of light and dark painted first. Now I'm just starting to paint some of the sailboat. Really, I'm hopping around, uh, letting things dry, finding other areas I can work on. Again, I want to point out that once I got those skin tones painted in, even though I will have to do some adjusting, I want to let it dry completely first. Then I'll have a better idea of exactly how light or dark that paint is going to dry to. But also, I create less of a muddy look if I don't keep going into it with my brush while it's damp. Here I'm starting to add details to the boat and um, really playing with how dark certain areas are and then softening them. You can definitely see that on the steering wheel as I'm painting in the darkest shadows first. I'm painting at a mill consistency and my uh, my brush here doesn't have any paint on it at this point I am just softening the edge of the shadow I already put in. That soft edge between the light side and the dark side gives us a sense of the roundness of that object that it's a cylindrical form. I'm turning my attention to the sunglasses now and I want to put in the lightest reflections I see in them. I really enjoy painting sunglasses. It seems like with just a few abstract shapes of reflected light, you can really create a fun sense of dimension. I've darkened some of the shadows in his ear and now I'm just putting down a really really light coat of uh, blue in his hair because there is gray in there and I am now going in with some darker color which is a neutral tint with just a little bit of French ultramarine in it. Uh, Richard's hair is pretty salt and pepper and it would definitely be picking up some of the reflections of the sky. You'll also notice that I painted some blue big shapes on his shirt. I later changed my mind and just lifted them out and decided to give him a white shirt. And to create some shadow shapes in the white shirt, I did not lift out that blue um, entirely. I let some of that uh, stay in there to help create some texture and some dimension in the white shirt.
To avoid having the hair look like a helmet or a hat, we really want to soften the edge of where our hair meets our skin. So here I'm just softening that edge. I'm putting down a little bit of water and then I'm putting down a little bit of paint to sort of soften where our hair meets the skin. Going in and adding a little bit of shadow shape to uh, where the glasses are casting a shadow on his cheekbone. And now I'm starting to add a little bit more dimension into the skin by starting to get my middle values and my darker values painted in. It seems less dramatic now that there are some other darker tones on the paper. Here I turn the paper around just because it's easier on my wrist to get some of these angles done. A lot of times I see students struggling trying to get a shape painted just because it's not a natural hand position. So please turn your paper around and make it easiest for you. There were a lot of details and little minutiae, a lot of ropes and uh, things going on with the sailboat and I really pared it down quite a bit. I did like that yellow rope coming down because it does point towards his hand, which then takes you to his face. So that, uh, I, I left those details pretty minimal. Now I'm getting into painting the ocean behind him. The ocean was a pretty amazing, almost midnight blue. Here I'm going in with French ultramarine and just a touch of neutral tint here and there to try to get some of that dark depth I am painting it on dry paper. If I painted it on wet paper, it would definitely dilute the paint and I would not be able to get the nice dark ocean that to me really recalls our, our experience of that sailing trip. With the ocean, I don't really worry about mixing an even puddle of paint. I have a big puddle of French ultramarine and it's pretty thick. I would say it's whole milk or, or maybe even getting creamy. And then I have a separate puddle of neutral tint and I just dip my brush into different puddles every time I go back to reload my brush. I'm painting fairly quickly because I don't want to get these odd dry lines where I haven't been able to paint fast enough. The only place I really slow down is up against his profile because I want to keep that accurate. But other than that and along the rope, I'm trying to paint pretty quickly. The paint is a thicker consistency than I normally paint. I think I tend to always paint in a milk consistency. And because it's thick, it'll dry faster. So I am working pretty fast here to make sure I can control the direction of the brush strokes and not get dry lines where I don't want them.
I apologize that the part of the painting where I'm painting now is off camera, still getting a hang of recording, but it is basically more of the same. I'm painting uh, the last bit of ocean on the other side of the yellow rope. Now it's time to get into just the details of it and making sure my values are accurate. One of the darkest uh, shapes in this painting are the sunglasses. So getting those in will really tell me if I have to darken up the other values in the painting. Values are relative, so the skin tone might look accurate at this point, but once I put something really dark next to it, it'll reveal to me much more accurately if the skin tone is too light or too dark or what needs to be adjusted. Here I'm just starting to paint some of the darker details that I see in the sailboat. Again, I really simplified all the shapes um, and tools and gears that were in the photograph. It would be easy to go overboard, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, with, with all the details, um, but I don't want to put those in there. To me, this painting is really about my brother and his relationship with sailing. And our eye tends to go where all the details are. So if I put in a lot of details on that little wedge of sailboat that you can see there, it gets confusing. The, the painting starts to be about the sailboat. So I've really minimized it and I'm painting in some of the darkest darks now to help me see, again, my values of light and dark. Here I'm putting in the darkest shadow, which is underneath my, um, my brother's forearm. And some of the other shadows now that are on his hand, which will help it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm using the same colors that I was using in the original mix for skin tones, which is mostly alizarin crimson and yellow ochre, with just a touch of French ultramarine blue to darken things up. This is the point where I'm starting to put in some details on the hand. Now that I have those dark sunglasses in, I can see that the shadow that they cast needs to go much darker on his face. You can see I lifted off a lot of the blue in his white shirt and it has more of a white billowy look with those shadow shapes kind of abstractly put in across them. Now I'm coming in and putting in the rest of the dark shadows in the sunglasses. And you can see where initially when Richard's face was just surrounded by white paper, his skin tones looked really pigmented and maybe too red. And now they've sort of taken a much more natural look now that we have the rest of the colors put in around them. Here I'm adjusting my values. I feel like I'm getting towards the end of the painting 
but I want to make my values a little bit deeper and richer. So adding more shadow. And softening the edge of that shadow with just a damp brush. Here I'm continuing to add shadows and some details to the interior of the sailboat. I want to add some interest, but I don't want it to be overly detailed. And the last thing I chose to do is just add just a little bit more of uh, blue to his shirt. Again, I still want it to look like a white shirt, but the shadows are best done in a little bit of blue. And this is cobalt teal. Just a few touches here and there, and I think I'm done with Richard sailing from Sardinia to Corsica. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo.